Next up, Ken Wilshire discovers a Tennessee treasure up near Clarksville. Dunbar Cave was closed for many years due to state budget cuts. Now, thank goodness, it's open again to lovers of nature and history alike. In fact, you might say it's been a cool place to visit for thousands of years. Ah, the Big Band era. It was usually associated with big cities like New York and Chicago. But how about Clarksville, Tennessee? Well, of all places, big bands performed at the entrance of Dunbar Cave. People would gather here to dance and to enjoy the music and the cool, cool air coming out of the mouth of the cave. Park Ranger Adam Nablet takes us back in time. Up around the time of the First World War, people started to really have dances. They poured a concrete floor in up at the cave entrance. Benny Goodman, Tommy Dorsey, Lena Horn were some of the names that came here and performed in the 30s and 40s. And that's one of the things people remember most about Dunbar Cave is coming to the big band dances. World War II kind of saw a slacking off of visitation here at the resort. But after the war, um, Roy Acuff in 1948 purchased the cave. And as most people know, Mr. Acuff was a very big name in country music. And he used to have he square dances and round dances here on the weekends and Grand Ole Opry style shows on Sunday afternoons. And that's something people remember. This is the, the dance floor area from the 1930s and 40s, and this structure here was the concession stand. They had popcorn and Coca-Cola and imagine hamburgers and hot dogs. And up on top, they would have had a patio with tables and chairs set up. People would sit and watch the bands play on the, the bandstand, and also all the people out here dancing. They used to have bingo tables set up. People would play bingo. And this was also the office during the Roy Acuff days in the late 40s and 50s is where it had the office to buy tickets for the, the cave tours that were going on during that time. The 110-acre park is now owned by the state, and it's classified as a scenic natural area. It includes beautiful walking and jogging trails, a lake for dropping a hook or two. But as you might expect, it's the cave that draws thousands into the area each month. Are we gonna see any spiders in there? Probably not, there's not a whole lot for them to eat in there. Michael Fulbright is one of the park rangers who conducts the cave tours. Be careful on this big step. It's all kind of gather up together. Those are stoke marks. And these date back a couple thousand years, so they're pretty old. And we tell people have been coming into the cave because, for over 10,000 years because we found leftover tools from them and spear tips that give them that age. We're in the third life zone of the cave. This is the one that a lot of people have a hard time remembering. It's called the variable temperature zone. It's called that because the temperature in here changes a little bit throughout the year. In the winter time, it might drop all the way down to maybe 53 degrees when it's really cold outside. And when it's really hot, it might go all the way up to maybe 63. So it changes about 10 degrees throughout the year. While we know much about the cave's recent past, just a few years ago, researchers discovered even more interesting facts about the cave's prehistoric times. They found art on the walls drawn thousands of years ago by the cave's early inhabitants. These drawings are from about the year 1350 AD, which means they were done by the Mississippian people who lived from about 800 to about 1550 AD. These are the ancient ancestors of today's Native Americans like the Shawnee, the Chickasaw, and the Choctaw tribes. The last of their people died out right before the English got here. These are symbols, drawings from the Mississippian period, and he found several more. So I think to this date, there's 38 or 40 drawings been found inside the cave, and cave art in the southeast isn't necessarily such a unique thing. They found it in a lot of caves, but this is the only place in the country where the public can view this art. It's already a publicly owned site that was already set up for visitors. The Parks Visitor Center has lots of old photos and maps of the area and even a museum with artifacts from the 
past and present. So as you can see, Dunbar Cave is steeped in history and offers its visitors a really cool, cool 58 degree look at the past that's being well preserved for future generations.